listen to John Lim last today. He is my Gnostic teacher on the internet, and it is the end of the Baklamuki shift in the day before the total solar eclipse in South America, the only place in the world you're going to be able to view it. Somewhere, I think, in Chile. And I, as I have bragging rights, went to the total eclipse of the sun, the path of totality, and got to see it in North America as it sashayed its way like a Miss America pageant banner across the chest. Going from Oregon down and emptying out South Carolina. Now, my friends all went to Charleston and they didn't see it. They were very disappointed. I went to South Carolina and uh, saw it in the um, comfort of my own little blanket with my own friend Michael and just us on Connie National or, or State Forest or something like that. Oh, Connie, South Carolina. And then later we went to Lake Joukowsi and went swimming. Oh, it was fabulous. So I was shorted out. Uh, anyway, this is big energy. Big energy. So I've been working with my own um, learning and soul journey on planetary tantra. That's what you do. You don't listen to what other people tell you. You confer your own path, but and you and it's reflected because part of the, the attention is mirroring. So the first attention in the world is just observing events. You can see what's going on. Well, the second attention, which is my affirmation I'm on the path, <laughs> is that I'm seeing events and teachers mirroring my own inner knowledge, my own inner wisdom, uh, knowing, coming on board. And that may be true for you, too. I've been practicing planetary tantra, and it is like um, a magic pair of pants. You know, the sisterhood of the magical pants, or the sisterhood of the traveling pants, or the sisterhood of some sort of pants. And they all, they would wear the pants. <laughs> and each one would have their own self-reflective experience. But the pants, miraculously, because this is a, a, a magic story, uh, shaped perfectly to the gal who was wearing them. <laughs> Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Yeah, and they made a movie out of it. Anyway, um, this kind of works like that, but not. Um, the magic of the pants that it shaped itself to fit their bodies. Huh, that's an interesting thought. Well, in a lot of ways, it goes both ways, right? So the girls enjoyed the pants. Maybe the pants enjoyed being on the girls. I mean, they couldn't have been hard to get on. <laughs> that was so punny. I couldn't help it. It came into my mind. Um, the Shakti Cluster app is shaped in such a way that it generates its own energy. It doesn't require anything from anybody. However, <clears throat> your own intentionality, your own shaping of your thoughts and intentions, gaze upon it, and it's going to be handheld in your hand. Mine's in a notebook because that's how I'm teaching. But you can go on to unimeta.org and get your own symbol. So the symbol in of itself is not like a powerful thing that's magically going to make your life all better. It's a tool. You can have all the knives in the world, but you're not going to cut that piece of cheese unless you pick up that knife and use it. <laughs> Who cut the cheese? <laughs> Oh my goodness, puns are happening. Um, so this symbol uh, is <clears throat> was uh, delivered in a uh, bundle of uh, gems and wisdom and uh, the jewels in the lotus.
And I'm not going to point to you right now who Bhagwa Muki is and who Swan Devi is because uh, whether we go into like uh, the, the shift is about to hit the fan. <laughs> shift is happening. We're, the shift is like boost. We're going full, full throttle. This is great. So, uh, ah, I'm uh, overjoyed with joy. I'm going to take a walk. I'm going to talk to you in the future about the things that I found mirrored to me. Signs, signs and sigils, especially since I have, by permission from the Dakota Native American Indian medicine woman who I met at the Transformational Shift Conference who presented and was there as a force uh, of both power and groundedness and gentle spirit, um, she said I could take a picture of it and use it. And these are symbols, ancient symbols that have been passed down through the ancient people of which you are a descendant. <laughs> You're an Indo-European, so you're a white Indian. You were an indigenous people, and you were killed off. And I'm going to show you pictures and everything I research on the internet. I'm from an Amer I'm from an American family who practiced Christianity, and I. Uh, it's just beautiful what happened. Um, <clears throat> first of all, we didn't learn any of the pagan holidays, and Halloween was confusing because. I'd be like, okay, so an Easter bunny is delivering us eggs? Okay, so they make Easter, I just, it's so confusing. And then why is Jesus there in this cross thing? Like, why are we celebrating his agonizing death? And he didn't really die for our sins. He came here to show us the way. And he was killed for it. And then the entire story was rearranged and changed. <laughs> It's, it's a farce, folks. Yes, the Christ existed. But he's not who they say he was or wasn't. It doesn't even matter when he was born. It doesn't matter. Because the Christos has been here for a very, very long time. If you've experienced that golden light. <sighs> have you experienced that? Yeah, it's really nice. It's delicious. Um, so, they told us a story. It's a, it's a, it's a big fable, and, um, you know, when I was a girl, I remember uh, coming out of a movie theater, and it was probably a Walt Disney flick. And life just wasn't like that. And I remember that. I wanted to hold on to that illusion. I didn't have the word for it back then, but I knew that once I left that red carpeted, uh, red um, curtained theater, which parted amazingly, like it would part. It didn't just come on, it, the, the curtains came apart. Big gold tassels hung from either side. It was like you were in an opera. The seats were comfortable, but they were, it was stadium enough seating, so you didn't have to worry about the bozo in front of you nowadays on their cell phones. Now they, they have this silly concept where you have this eating experience and you're um, basically paying a lot of money to do what you can do at home. I'm telling you, the magic of the theater has gone. And that's why it put a spell on us early on. They had to keep us entertained, I suppose, and that was what the whole deal was. They got us as a society junkied, junked up on entertainment, like needing to be entertained, because life can suck. I mean, they don't want you to, oh, let's entertain you so you don't notice there's a rat eating your face. <laughs> Excuse me. That's that's from Ginny, who's uh, another one of my teachers on the internet. They don't know me, but they've taught me through themselves. 
I've never seen her face. I hear her voice. Excuse me, there's a rat eating your face. <laughs> Is not the lie so blatantly obvious? I mean, look what they're doing in the school systems. Look what they're teaching kids. Look what's becoming of them. <laughs> They think, e they, think, they, they think evil people that created atrocities towards humans are actually heroes built on ideologies that didn't succeed because they kill people. <laughs> oh, history, his story. Come on, man. His story. Who is he? He's some guy who wants to control you and keep you from knowing your glory. So that's what I'm going to tell you. There's a solution to this because, sure, you can go along with it or you can tune into your own vibe. So I recommend that option. Tune into your own vibe and the vibe of the mother. Turn into something like Planetary Tantra. And for God's sake, for God's sake, would you please figure out what the Earth holidays are and celebrate the Earth? <sighs> Celebrate the Earth, folks. Okay, get a good look at Planetary Tantra. That's a symbol. A turton received. In your lifetime, you get, you get to actually witness this. If, if you're watching this now, if you're getting this later and all this stuff still, this still exists, this is the front line, folks. Because a turton receives a necessary wisdom package <laughs> to help humanity... Um, along the way, along the path. And he does it by way of explaining the biology of the Earth, of the planet, and where we actually do come from. <laughs> we're glorious. And things have, have been hijacked, and our people were slaughtered. We used to celebrate the Earth. We used to celebrate the Earth. We would celebrate all those holidays. The holidays weren't, weren't, weren't any of the religious ones. <laughs> No, it was sort of like in a sextile. Sextile. We put the sex into sextile, all right, because we love sex as pagans and those who celebrate the earth. Pagans, that was a name given to us by the assholes that killed most of us or all of us. And they gave the Gnosis to Lestai. They gave them, this is according to John Lane Lash. He told me this, not me personally, but you know in his videos, that uh, Gnosis that Gnostics, that was a term for know-it-all. And sure enough, the root word, Gnosis, is to know. But they, you can use a root word of any verb and turn it into a, a fucking swear if you want. <laughs> By following keys, vocabulary, keys. This is Ida Rich, L. Rich's method, and you learn so much about your own history. By reading the keys, because um, I am going to do that when I don't have to wear my glasses, when I have my contacts out, because that way I'm not um, forced to slow down to find exactly what I want to show you, because right now I am fine by the seat of my pants. I gathered this information, so that's what we're going to be covering is, um, yeah, we know it's a farce, but those of us who are wanting to live our lives as intended, have something we can do about it. We can practice the old religions by acknowledging them. Maybe you don't want to read a book like Celebrate the Earth and then do all those funny rituals that they do. But maybe you want to read about it, you know, read about it, you know, and follow your interests. Go online and find out what it's all about. And it's, it's, it's following the breadcrumbs. It's following the path to your own soul. If you're called to do that, such a thing as, as uh, that, and I was steered away from paganism and Wicca because I think it's weird. I don't want to wear mock outfits. I just want to practice it wholly in, in and amongst myself. So if you're into that sort of ceremonial thing, that's you. I'm a very private person. And I respect that. And certainly I would celebrate it, but not by the way of these garish ideas I see coming through because it's a, a perversion. The um, celebrations were you dressed in your finest and fanciful and naturally it was um, 
You you wore what pleased you. You didn't wear um, a fake velvet robe that and, and and make your face really white and give your lips really blood red lipstick and paint your paint these black and have a pentacle. I mean, what does a pentacle mean to you anyway? You know? I'll tell you what a pentacle started off as. That's why it's good for you to know these symbols, because the symbols have been used against us in mass hypnosis and mass amnesia to make us think something right is wrong and wrong is right. All right, I'll show you what the original symbol for pentacle before the symbol became a five, as you know it. That was forced upon us. Before, we used to have a symbol for five. Why do we have to count anyway? Oh, counting came because accounting came. Get it? Money. The making of money. The de requiring, the demanding. That... Okay, here we are. Thanks for your patience. Um, five. Symbolize, symbolizes humanity and is, is associated with the planet Mercury. So when you're wearing that, Mercury is the god of, of flight, communications. And so it would be, oh, this will help me with communication. This will help get the message through, message from the gods. Mercury is a messenger of the gods. So it's a symbol of that power. Okay? <laughs> There you have it. This is Life Magic. Call your local bookstore. Buy it from them. ISB 0684-85354-X. So I'm not going to go into the number six yet because it is a stolen symbol. But also, this is a two-dimensional representation of something much more powerful. In the... Um, three-dimensional realm. You know? I think I've showed you my start. Where is it? Oh, first try. First fly, but I haven't found it, but I was working with it earlier. Um, oh, so we'll talk about that, and I'm also, yes, I'll be showing you the keys in that book of language, and the Latin word they came from, we will be uh, also going over again um, into European what languages they were. So, in other words, what peoples, what languages they spoke, so that you know who the good guys are. <laughs> you will know who the good fairies are because there is a war on Earth and you're in it, but you don't know it. So, um, if you want to actually have a life worth living, it's it's a good idea to start practicing what is in favor of your own genetic coding so that you can rise to the occasion. Otherwise you want to wake in your superpowers and you will be just this um, technobot person whose basic needs are being met by a higher price tag. Um, yeah, this was the last thing I wanted to say because uh, it's a key as well, uh, and it's called Temperance, and Temperance is a, um, it's card 14, I think, in the um, Tarot, and it means uh, alchemy, and it's a healing angel, okay, so an angel hasn't become a human yet, I discovered this because Aurora told me, and I am, not me, but everybody, that, um, we go from angel to human, but the angels know how to help us to some degree, but we have to help them help us by being very dis distinct and intentful. We can't be, just give me the best thing that could possibly happen, because what happens if they think that means hurting you? So I am very, very distinct, in I, I, I require energy to rejuvenate, I require energy to... Uh, be strengthened, and then you love and appreciate the earth, and you ask for the clearing of the lens 
so that you can see the higher dimensional realities. So you perceive it. So you, yourself, and you awaken your own upper. And you don't have to do anything fancy to do that. You have to actually use this time, which is great because it's the um, big, huge thing. <laughs> There's like things happening. Uh, and the more you know what's happening, I guess, the better it is. But you can still tap into it. Any, I don't know. I don't know any of that bull crap. All I know, I'm excited. I'm excited. Want to know I'm excited? I'm excited. <laughs> because I'm having fun with this stuff. So, okay, temperance is the healing angel. Brings the energies and the flow of the body and mind back into balance. The blending the parts of the self in life into a new form. It combines psychic and uh, physiological elements with new forms. Psychic and, and or psychological elements with new forms. So... Basically, this is a really powerful time for you to create with your intention. What do you want? And we're about to have, I believe, a Deservistic Dakini. I believe, I believe we are. I don't know yet. But if we do, uh, wish is granted. Preparation to live a spiritual life. Okay, so this is, this is okay. Get all this stuff into uh, shape, right? Like that you thought in... in Invents uh, your, your thought in line with purity and truth, integrity of your being and your mother, your own source of your life, and of course, the, the source reality through the sun and all of that manifestation of a life worth living so much joy, so much abundance, and ways in, outside, inside of yourself, inside of your own definition, not outside. So that means not defined by anybody else's idea of what it is to have abundance. <laughs> You just keep tuning into yours. So this right now, uh, we are in preparation to live a spiritual life here on earth now while blending material existence with our spiritual sustenance. So yeah. Oh gosh. Uh, understand that our sensuous selves are the, and the acceptance of it are the key, the key to their earthly uh, facilitations of your own transformation into light beings of love. Sex with someone you love. Your sensuous selves. Enjoying sensuality. The five senses. Omani Padme Om, the jewels and the lotus. John keeps saying this. <laughs> it's in being human fully. And that doesn't have a religion stamped on it. It has an awareness stamped on it. It's I'm a human and I'm a fucking human. And don't say amen to that, because that right there is actually um, praying to the fake God who has kept us in um, chains. But all we have to do is take them off. See how loosely they are? So there's the upside down pentacle. Well, the upside down pentacle can be one, it's representative of a very rooted one. Not everything is negative. That, uh, it's how you use a symbol and the intention of it that determines whether or not it's bad. Meaning, is it black magic or is it white magic? So it is the intended use that charges it. It is not the item. So our symbols were stolen from us and have been used against us. So it has made people afraid of the pentacle. And people have been using a pentacle without knowing what it is. It is saying... I am sending a message to the gods. I am sending a message to the goddess. I am sending a message to creator. I am a child of yours. I am uh, in my integrity, my will and thine are one. <laughs> of course. And, and then you line up with it and it's just all that's rightness in the world without having to adhere to a book. <laughs> if you have to adhere to a book... <laughs> okay, the number one rules in the rule of life, there are no rules that you have to follow. <laughs> now, the golden rule, some would argue, and I'm not arguing anything that came out of a book right now. I'm having fun, okay? <laughs> the golden light, see? They fool you. 
yeah, just part of that is true. Part of, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Oh, you know how many people would punch their own faces in? <laughs> That's not a good golden rule. I don't like it. <laughs> no. People have suicidal... See that? They duped us. Why? Because we know gold. And that's what they're after. They're after gold. They're after our gold. Guess what? Because we are the golden children <laughs> of the sky gods and goddesses. Our DNA is the closest to it. Nobody has what we have. <laughs> and they want us to forget it. And they've done a really good job. But it, it, it keeps getting snuck in here and there in perverse, way, perverse ways, and I'd rather make a mockery of it. <laughs> as, what, as what it is, it's like, joke's over, people. The lights have gone on. Do you want to stay in that little fantasy world? If you did, you'd know you'd die. If you never came out of it, you'd always be in the dark. Real life is to be lived. Live, L-I-V-E, because the opposite of live is evil. <laughs> More on this stuff. We're on a roll. Enjoy the uh, total eclipse of the sun in South America, and we're all going to be feeling it.